I just want to mention that the underwriter for today's episode is Anchor Podcast Platform. Uh, these are the free podcast people that uh, will help you or anybody who wants to start a podcast. They'll get you going and they'll put you on all the platforms from Spotify to Apple and Google, Stitcher, and they do it for free. They don't charge you a dime. I mean, this is all about the democratization of audio so that everybody can have a voice online like this. And they've supported me in getting my podcast started. Six hours since the polls closed on Tuesday in Michigan and five other states. Needless to say, and and no way really to sugarcoat this, is that um, um, things didn't go the way that I hoped that they would go on Tuesday. Not just myself, but I'm sure many of you. I'm also certain there are people listening to this that are very happy with how things went. Tuesday was merely... Um, seven days after Super Tuesday, just 10 days after South Carolina. And in those 10 days, the old guard of the Democratic Party, the corporate Democrats, the, the media that supports the view of these moderate Democrats, got very excited overnight behind a candidate that they had dismissed and buried and now saw as their last great hope against uh, Bernie Sanders. And so they went all out over the past week trying to get the American public to believe that, well, the candidate, the Democratic candidate's already been picked. His name is Joe Biden. And it worked. (laughs) They, you know, the people in power, they always, they know how to prey on people's fears. And the fear of not defeating Trump is just too great. It is, and in fact, it is great. It it should be a fear. We have to defeat Trump. We have to remove Trump. But when given the choice of defeating him with somebody who is truly the opposite of him and, and will work toward creating a country very different from the one that Donald Trump believes in, they've been able to convince enough people so far to go for the candidate that um, promises, quote, no uh, significant uh, changes. He just wants to go back to the Obama years. He calls the Trump presidency an aberration. Contrary to what I and many of you believe, that Trump was actually the natural extension of decades, decades of building a, a country that benefited the few instead of the many and that we would end up with somebody like Trump was, in some sense, no surprise. But that's not how the way Joe Biden sees it. He sees it as as just a one-off. Trump's a one-off. And if we just go back, go back to the way it was before Trump, Biden has absolutely no sense of what that means, of what it was like for the tens of millions of people before Trump who still ended up in bankruptcy, losing their homes because of medical bills. Medical bills under Obamacare. No idea of of how people are trying to get by living from paycheck to paycheck, trying to get by without being able to afford daycare, trying to get, get by with paying off student loans, sometimes for decades. No, nobody, nobody I know wants to go back to that. We have it already. We have it right now. There's no going back. Going back to when? It can only be going forward. Representative Jim Clyburn from South Carolina, uh, two nights ago on Tuesday night, right after the 
or when the polls were closing, said that enough's enough. Uh, we need to, the DNC, he said, needs to step in and put a halt to the primaries. Put a halt to the debates. No more debates. We don't need to anymore. And, and James Carville joined in with him. We need to bring this primary thing to an end. <laughs> this, this primary. Bring the primaries to an end? You mean, you mean don't let the majority of the country, which hasn't voted yet, vote? We've had primaries or caucuses now in 24 states. Um, and one territory. There are 26 states and three more territories plus Washington, D.C. to go. So we're not even at the halfway point. We haven't even counted the votes in California. There's a few million votes still to be counted in California. None of that has happened yet. But but the old guard of the Democratic Party wants to just, let's just, Let's just, let's call a wrap on this right now. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Bernie Sanders said it yesterday um, when he made his announcement that he's continuing, that he is, there's going to be a debate this Sunday night. Joe Biden is going to have to stand there on the stage for two hours and face Bernie. And that I think will hopefully show many people, maybe many many of you who aren't convinced yet, that we're in deep trouble with Joe Biden as the candidate. If you really think that we've that job one is to defeat Trump and get rid of Trump, why would so many people just jump in believing that after not having believed it before South Carolina? But all of a sudden, with South Carolina and Super Tuesday, and then boom, that's it. After a third of the country has had it say, we've seen enough. We don't need the other two thirds the way in. You don't need to see Biden in a real debate, a real debate, not a debate with 24 people on the stage, a real debate, one-on-one, -on -one, like it's going to have to be with, with Trump. You don't want to see that? You don't want to question, I mean, what exactly is Biden's problem? Why does he say the things where does his mind go when he's answering a question? What is that about? I'm not a doctor. I don't know. But when he's asked a, a question, as he was at one of the debates about the, the legacy of slavery, and he started talking about record players. You know, I mean, I'm not going to go through all the things that we call gaffes on his part, but it, they're getting more and more bizarre and more more common and more intense. and 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 so, you know, finally, I just... I had to start making some calls. I had to start talking to some people who I've known or I've met over the years. I'm not, maybe I don't, I don't necessarily know them personally that well. They're not close friends, but I figured they'd take my phone call. I figured they'd talk to me if I ran into them at some function or whatever. And, um, and so I want to tell you what, what I've learned in my private uh, not for attribution discussions with people that don't necessarily share my politics in the Democratic Party, but are good enough people that they were willing to confide their concerns and their fears to me. And I want to share uh, some of that right now. Over these past 10 days, there is not one Longtime Democrat, well known Democrat, party functionary that I've spoken to that has not, off the record, admitted to me that there is a problem with Joe Biden. And when they say that, they are primarily speaking about something something has happened or something is wrong. What they what they describe to me as cognitive decline. I mean, I guess there's many ways to describe it. We all know it because we all have parents or grandparents or great-grandparents. We've all seen it. it. It starts to worry us. It starts to concern us. But it's not all the time. And so it looks like, you know, things are still okay. And, and we're, we're decent people. And we want our elders to live a long life and a happy life and have access to everything in life that they should have and they shouldn't be denied it because simply because they've gotten old. 
So it's, it's why I think it's difficult for some people to discuss this, but we're talking about the fate of the country at this moment here. That's all I'm talking about. We're talking about beating down Donald Trump, not Donald Trump crushing our candidate. And every person I have spoken to in these 10 days has agreed that there's a problem. Some of them have even gone so far as to describe to me um, the measures that they know from speaking to the Biden campaign or people close to the campaign. Measures are being taken. I keep being told this. Measures, don't worry, measures are being, what do you mean by measures? What measures can you do? Somebody is in decline, they're in decline. I mean, I don't know of a way to reverse that, but what, 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 what are you saying? And then they start to describe to me things like, um, well, first of all, we're suggesting that he name his vice presidential nominee now or very soon. Um, tell the public who he's chosen, tell her name. It'll be a woman. And, but it's, it's going to be a very smart woman, a younger woman, a capable brainiac woman, somebody that when people, if they, if, if he does mess up between now and the convention or now in the election, and it's enough for people to rationalize or say to themselves, it's okay. Look, look, who's the VP, you know, if this goes further, it gets worse or whatever. Look at the VP. Oh my God. She's incredible. I said, wow, you know, there's a cynical tone to what you're describing to me when you say, yeah, let's just go pick a brainiac woman off the shelf here and use her, what, as a prop? No, 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 Mike, no, 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 I mean, no, <laughs> she'll be real. And and if she has to take over, um, she'll do a great job. It'll be, it'll be somebody you like. Yeah, but we need the top of the ticket in great shape, mentally, especially. Well, you're... Your guy had a heart attack. Yeah, he had a heart attack. Guys have heart attacks, especially as they get older. It's not uncommon. He had stents put in. Millions of people have stents put in. They're, they're, while they were in there, they cleaned out his arteries. The guy is like at full shape. They, he released his records. You know, when they said, oh, we want more records. I mean, these when we think records, we're thinking we're watching Marcus Welby or whatever the doctors or something with large file folders of records. You know, he released three very detailed letters from a medical doctor and from two cardiologists. And you can read, you can read, nobody's taking the time to read it. It's online. Blood pressure, a hundred over 50. <laughs> if you know anything about blood pressure, that's incredible. Cholesterol, cholesterol was under a hundred, under a hundred. You know, and the good and the bad cholesterol and all that. It was so, it, man, we should all hope for this, for what Bernie has. No, no, this is something else I'm talking about. I'm talking about, you know, what's the problem with us having this discussion about Joe's um, cognitive abilities? You know, and these things he's been telling that aren't the truth. I mean, they, they, they've kind of slid by the media in part because, well, you know, the reasons they're, they're, they're not going to cover this, but this whole thing that he went through talking about how he got arrested, trying to see Nelson Mandela, you know, he was never arrested. It was just completely made up either in his head on purpose or in his head, because that's the way, you know, you start to remember your history more heroic than perhaps it was it's better. It feels better. And all the other little things they've caught him in. Remember if you're old enough, when he, when he first ran, when he first had to drop out in 1988 is because they caught him plagiarizing, stealing other people's writings and not telling the truth about his grades. And you know, all this other stuff that it seems so small now compared to the crap we got to, we got to live with right now. Oh my God. So in these last 10 days and talking to these people, this is, so this is one of the things I've heard we're, we're going to, he's going to pick a great vice president. We're going to, you're going to know who it is. Um, 
sooner rather than later, and it will bring comfort to you because you'll know that there's a backup. Instead of going into battle with Donald Trump with the number one person on the ticket at full force to defeat Donald J. Trump. I will say, I personally, I don't know if you saw the footage of him in the Detroit Auto Factory the other day where the guy confronted him about, you're going to take away my guns. And and Biden just says to him, you're full of shit. You know, just the way grandpa would say. You know, you do reach that age where you just really don't give a shit about what anybody thinks. And and those of us who are younger were like, oh, I wish I could do that. And it was, he just says to the guy, you're full of shit. He says, you know, well, here's, here's what I'm going to take away. I'm going to take away your AR-15 and you don't need 100 bullets to fire at once to shoot a deer. Because <laughs> all that's going to be left of the deer are all the bullet fragments <laughs> that are in. You're not going to eat that deer. I I know some people didn't like it. I thought and people some people use that as an example that, uh, you know, he's kind of losing it. But no, I didn't think that. I thought that was really, that was good. These, these, these people that just listen to right wing radio, watch Fox, take away your guns. Nobody's taking away your guns, but you know, we have laws that, that don't allow you to have a missile launcher, (laughs) a rocket launcher, a tank. You have a problem with that, do you? So, um, yeah, we're going to have laws that are going to limit the firearms so that you can use them for hunting um, or range practice uh, or you're a collector. But these people that have a hundred guns in their home, in their basement, in their garage, 50 guns and with magazines that can fire a hundred bullets at a time. No, sorry. Nobody wants to live in that world and you don't get to decide the world we have to live in. I just, I thought that was, I thought that was very powerful when, when Biden did that. That's not what we're talking about though. Um, the other thing I've been told is that um, in order to help with this problem that nobody wants to discuss, um, well, they all agree that yes, Joe Biden has been kept under wraps. He's hidden from the cameras. He's rarely on a TV show. Um, you just don't see him. They, they really were hoping a few days ago to try to get this whole debate canceled this Sunday. Um, first, you know, because of the coronavirus, so then they eliminated the audience, so that was no longer an excuse. Then they tried to turn the debate around so where they could just sit down and not have to, so Joe wouldn't have to stand for two hours or um, wouldn't have to try to keep track of all these questions that are being asked by journalists. Um, maybe they could just take questions from Twitter or the, some imaginary audience. No, they really, they don't want the debate they don't want him speaking in public. They don't want him on shows. And um, and so they came up with this plan, as I have been told by more than one person, to keep his uh, public appearances limited. When he does speak in public, keep it keep the time limited, seven minutes preferably. Make sure there's always a teleprompter so he can read it. And then get him out of there. Don't take questions. And the day after I heard this from one of these um, pro-democratic, long-time, well-known people, there he was in St. Louis this week at a rally. I should put quote marks around rally. It's not like the rallies that you see for Bernie or for Trump where thousands upon thousands of people show up. Um, um, The the event in the rally in Flint with Joe the day before um, the Michigan primary. I had a journalist friend who was there and told me that there were actually more journalists, press and campaign operatives in the room than there were actual civilians, citizens. So anyways, at, um, at a Joe Biden rally, um, the idea is to limit this and to limit him. And sure enough, that's, that's exactly what, what they've been doing. I don't know how far can you get with this? 
How far can you keep this under wraps? Why and why turn this over as an issue to Trump and to and to right wing media? Why don't we deal with it? Well, why don't we be transparent about it? Why don't we be honest and open about it? You know, and it's not like the people that have voted so far in these twenty four states haven't noticed this about Biden. They've noticed it and they've gone ahead and voted for him. That truly shows commitment. Uh, and Bernie, again, very honest yesterday, saying he gets it. He's lost the electability argument so far with the voting population. They, the people voting, believe that Joe Biden is their best hope. Even though they really don't know anything about him. And if you don't think that's true, ask them, or even let me ask you, ask yourself. I'll ask you, I'll ask you right now. Don't look it up. Just let me ask you right now. Uh, tell me how much Joe Biden wants to raise the minimum wage by. Go ahead. How much? You, you, you don't know. No, I, I know. That's okay. You're not, you're not supposed to know. There's no been real, no real discussion by him of his policies or him out there fighting or trying to build a movement or trying to make any of this happen. Uh, let me ask you, I'll ask you, I'll ask you another one. Um, what's the, what's the, what's uh, Joe Biden's daycare uh, proposal? Daycare, you know, daycare, you know, the tens of millions of people who have to try to figure out how to afford to take care of the kids so they can go to work and then pay that daycare out of their pocket. As opposed to if they were living in more enlightened countries where that's taken care of for them, either at, at work by the employer or either by the state, the government, or in, in worst case scenario like France, uh, you got to pay a dollar or two an hour, you know, if you can afford it. <laughs> you don't know his daycare proposal. No, that's okay. Um, mass incarceration, what's he going to do about that? Any idea? How about legalizing marijuana? Do you know where he stands on that? Where where does Joe Biden uh, stand on climate change? What's his, I mean, I know obviously that he's, he's against climate. Don't say that. You know, he's against climate change. No, no, no. What is he specifically proposed for us to deal with this problem? You can just give me the broad, broad strokes of it. You don't have to give me his, if he does have one, he doesn't, you don't have to give me his 20 point plan. Just, just tell me what's he going to do? Well, he's going to get us back in the Paris Accords. That's the best. I think anybody I've asked that they can say, you know, the Paris Accords are, are they have no teeth. Tell me, if you can, Joe Biden's health care plan. Anybody? Go ahead. What's his, what's his health care plan? Yeah, that's right. He's, he's for that public option. But he still wants to keep the health care, private insurance, all that, all the big industry intact, which means no real change will occur. You know, for Bernie, for Elizabeth, and for those of you who were for Mayor Pete or uh, Amy or whatever, I bet you you could tell me, or even if you weren't for them, you could probably tell me a few of the things that they believed in or that they stood for. You, you, you know, you, you might know that, and remember from numerous times that she mentioned during debates that she co-sponsored legislation with Bernie to stop Big Pharma from gouging the American public. But look, um, you know, there's a saying in show business that the audience is never wrong, which, which isn't actually right, because otherwise you never would have watched Shawshank Redemption, which you now think I'm, it's one of the best films you've ever seen, but, but it bombed at the box office. And so thanks to video and digital and whatever, you got a chance to see it. Uh, so the audience isn't always right. Um, but in a democracy, the, when the voters have spoken, the voters have spoken, and the voters have spoken over the last 10 days. And um, what they've said is, I'll just read you the way, um, this is from the New Republic. Nevertheless, Democratic voters in these last couple of weeks um, have opted against real change. The voters in these primaries have opted against ending medical debt. They've opted against ending student debt. They've said they, they, they do not want any dramatic action taken to save the world from climate catastrophe. 
the consequences of this decision by these voters will be felt for years to come for those lucky enough to survive long enough to feel them. I know a lot of you have felt very depressed since uh, Tuesday. And we cannot let depression and despair enter into this because, first of all, this is a long way from being over. Turn the TV off. Quit listening to the pundits. Illinois has not spoken. The state of New York has not spoken. Connecticut, New Jersey, Arizona. Um, I can go on and on. There's 26 states. Puerto Rico hasn't spoken. You know, don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Come on. We're not the wimps here. This is, it's, it's, um, yes, I know it's, it looks a lot harder now. I, of course, I, I agree with that. I also can see the silver lining in what's happened here. It's, it's a stunning to me, these exit polls. When they ask people questions on the policies and on the issues, in nearly every single question, the voters at these early primaries have sided with Bernie Sanders. And then they've gone in and voted for Joe Biden. It's, it's classic. Loving the message, but eh, maybe not the messenger. Well, they love the messenger. They'll, even Bernie said this yesterday. They, he says, I've heard this a hundred times. I, 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 lo- I love you. Or, or one of his supporters, or I love Bernie Sanders. So yeah, I love you. I, I, I'm for all what he's, I'm all for what he's for, but we got to beat Trump, but we got to beat Trump. And somehow they just don't see it. They don't see that Bernie beating Trump. They don't see that we're going with the strongest candidate who's the fighter, as opposed to the weaker candidate who has a lot of things, a lot of red meat to give Trump. Uh, They don't see it. And if they don't see it, they don't say, I mean, there's, look, that's the country we live in, my friends. I don't know what to say. It's not that people are stupid. They're afraid. I mean, people are a little, I shouldn't say stupid. They're not, people are ignorant. I mean, we're not as well educated as we should be about our democracy. Uh, the, The majority of Americans cannot name their two United States senators from their state. And, you know, I'm not going to give you all the other statistics. You know what they are. But that's the, that's the country we, okay, I'll give you one more. That, the one I've, I always love the most is the one from the, they did a poll of Ivy League seniors asking them when did the Civil War take place. And to make it easy on them, they gave them a multiple choice of did it take place between 1750 and 1800, 1800 and 1850, 1850 and 1900. <laughs> it was like 51% of Ivy League seniors could not even within a 50-year range say when the Civil War took place. Okay, so I, we know we live. We know where we live. We know who our fellow Americans are. I don't need to belabor that point. <laughs> but they are speaking, and they have spoken. And um, they um, are afraid. And when you make decisions on fear, as I said earlier this week, they oftentimes aren't very good decisions you end up making. But that's the that's the way it is. So all these exit polls, what was it? Something Mississippi was what was it fifty seven percent or was it it was fifty seven percent in the exit polls and sixty one percent in just the regular polls of Mississippi voters support Medicare for all. And when they when they asked the question of people coming out of, of the voting booth, um the same the same true was true in Missouri. In these red states, in these southern states, in fact, there has not been a single state where they haven't been in favor of uh, Medicare for all. I think maybe Tennessee was tied with something. No, that was for, no, that was another question. No, no, Medicare for all is, yeah, every state is for Bernie's plan. And they asked the question this too, is that they tried to really, really kind of prime, prime the pump here. They here, this was the question. Um, would you be in favor of eliminating private health insurance and replacing it with a government plan? <laughs> Even asking it that way, the majority said, yes, get rid of the private health insurance. 
I want a government-run plan that covers everybody. I'm tired of paying for it out of my pocket. Yes, pay for it with taxes. Tax the rich. Begin with them. That doesn't matter what the question is coming out of the polls, whether it's on minimum wage, uh, climate change, etc. Everybody, everybody, meaning the, the vast majority. Seriously, anywhere from 52% to over 70%, depending on the question in the state, pick the Bernie Sanders position. My friends, that's huge progress. I mean, none of this is easy in terms of trying to create change. It takes a long time. I posted on my Facebook and uh, Instagram yesterday just what it took for women to get the vote. Oh, my God. Hundreds of women got together in 1848 at their first convention to try and get women the vote. 1848, it, it took another 72 years before women got the vote. And only one woman who was at that convention in Seneca Falls, New York in 1848 lived long enough to see women vote. It takes a long time. And you have to really ask yourself, what would you be willing to fight for knowing that you may not see it in your lifetime? Would you still give up all that time during your life to fight for it because it was the right thing to do and you hoped that maybe your children or grandchildren would have it, even if you don't get to have it? All great changes have occurred like that. Sometimes all great changes occur very quickly. And I pointed out how in 2004, all these states voted to outlaw same-sex marriage, 2004. And just 11 years later, in 2015, same-sex marriage was the law of the land. Bingo. Done. Quick. Over. Wow. Nobody expected it. To, certainly not when it was the, when all those bans were put in place in 04. Nobody expected to see that change in their lifetime. 11 years later, gone. So sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes it doesn't. But feel heartened by the fact that your fellow Americans, you don't have to convince them that Medicare for All is a good idea or that, that uh, college tuition for free is a good idea, um, that, that, that parents, especially single moms, should have daycare made available to them, and on and on and on. The people are with us. The people are already with us. That's usually the hardest part, isn't it? Trying to convince people to, to come along, get on board. <laughs> you know? I mean, ask Martin Luther King that if you could ask him, right? If you could ask him, what was that like? Trying to get people to, to believe in civil rights. I mean, there was a presidential election in 1956, the year after the uh, the Montgomery uh, bus boycott. It began in December of 1955. That next November, what if they had asked the polls in 1956? What if they had asked them, how do you feel about Martin Luther King? <laughs> how do you feel about civil rights? What do you think that would have been? But here we are. The exit polls are already with the people are already with us. They believe in what Bernie believes in. They believe in what you believe in. And you may not be for Bernie. You may be for Elizabeth. You might have been for Elizabeth Warren or um, anybody else. Or maybe you're not. You haven't decided yet. But you do believe that everybody should be able to see a doctor and not have to go broke doing it. We're already there. Feel good about that. You have to feel good about that. And feel good about the fact that we're not done yet. This isn't over. Don't give up. It's, this isn't the time to give up. And we need to vet Joe Biden. He needs to be put through the various processes here to see if he's going to be the one we want to send to, into the ring with Trump. And we want to see if he's really thought about the future, not just riding on the coattails of Obama from the past. I loved how the other day he called him, he called himself O'Biden. Or I think he was trying to refer to Obama and he called him O'Biden. I don't know what it was. It's, it's nothing to laugh at. It's something really to take seriously. This is important that people vote in these primaries. It's important that they go to your states. It's important that there's a debate. We need to see. We need to see. We need to know. 
and we don't need props. We don't need vice presidential uh, using women like this uh, to try and cover the fact that the person leading the ticket may have issues. That's not, that's not right. You know, it's not right. So pick yourselves up, um, get busy, get active. Next Tuesday, we've got Illinois, Ohio, Florida, and Arizona. I know Florida is probably a lost cause, but not, not Illinois, not Arizona, and hopefully not Ohio. Thank you for listening to this today. Uh, this sort of post Michigan, um, uh, podcast, um, there was good news. The ultimate news wasn't good. Um, except he, Bernie did win North Dakota. So come on folks. Where's the party? Where's the party for North Dakota? Um, hang in there. I'll talk to you soon. Um, and we'll get through all of this together. This is Rumble. I'm Michael Moore. And it's been an honor to be able to talk to you today. Thank you.